So the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to create a new blog post and we're gonna need a new action for that so that we can have a form that displays everything that we can fill out for our blog post. So we're going to need blog post slash new and we want to point this to blog posts new and we can say this one is new blog post. That will generate those helpers for us so we can link to the new blog post path and so on if we would like. And we can go to our browser and then try this route out. Blog post slash new. We'll hit enter and we get taken to the homepage, which is weird, right? Well, it's not weird. It is because your routes are executed in order. So when a request comes in from the browser, it says, hey, I wanna go to this URL. The Rails routes are defined in a specific order. So it says, let's look at this one. Does it match? Well, actually it does. It just treats the new word as the ID. So it ends up going to the show action. And then it says, hey, do we have a record in the database where the blog post ID is new and it converts the new to an integer and ends up looking up the word or the ID is nil. And so the new is not a valid database blog post ID. So it ends up not finding it and redirects you to the homepage. So that just means that we have these out of order. We need our new um, to be first so that it is processed before the variable one. So new fits that ID variable location and it just needs to be processed first so it's not treated as a blog post ID. So let's try this one more time, blog post slash new, and it works this time. Even though we get the error for unknown action, we can go fix that easy enough. We just need to go into our blog post controller, add def new and Refresh, we need a template. So we'll go into the blog post view, new.html.erb, and new blog post. Voila, there we go. So now we need to be able to create a form to create a blog post. And the easiest way to do that is we can use Active Record to generate a blog post in memory and we can assign that to a blog post variable. So we'll say blog post dot new. This is going to create a new blog post record in memory, not save it to the database. It will just be completely empty and we can use this to give to Rails to generate a form and Rails will take the form fields and match them to the correct uh, database columns for us. So if we are to use an ERB tag and we say form with, we can tell it we have a model, it's called blog post, that variable, and then we'll get a form variable that we can use to generate our form fields. So we can say form.label, we wanna have a title field, and we'll say text field for the title column, and then probably want to div around these so we can separate them out. We can copy this and we'll do a label for our body attribute and our body. And instead of a text field, like a single string, we can use the text area to make it a text box with multiple lines in it. And then we can also use form.button to create a submit button so we can submit this form to the server. So let's refresh our page and see what's going on here. Now this time it says there's an undefined method blog posts path. And this one is plural, it is not singular like before. What's happening here is the form with is trying to look at this blog post and it sees this is one without an ID, so I need to go to a different URL. When we linked to one blog post with an ID in our index, this is looking at the blog post path and saying, hey, here's a blog post ID of number one, number two, number three. But when we have a brand new one for our new action, it knows we don't have an ID, so we can't use that route. So it looks for a plural version of this. And it's looking for the um, posts slash blog posts. And we're going to send this to blog posts create. 
as blog posts. So this is going to end up uh, making a post request. The form is going to say, we want to create a new blog post, which is a post HTTP request. Then it's going to be able to look it up by name because we gave it the blog post name. It will go to that route. Then we'll end up creating a create action to take all the form fields you sent us and then save them in the database and then send you somewhere after we're done. So if we refresh our page now, it has a blog post route that it could match and find, and it's able to generate this form. So if we have a form tag with Rails, it will default to method post. It's gonna accept UTF-8 characters, and it's also gonna generate that action to the slash blog posts, and it knows that that's where we wanna send uh, by default to create a new blog post. It also creates this hidden field for the authenticity token, which allows you to protect your forms from being uh, attacked by malicious JavaScript um, and other malicious things that could happen. And it helps protect your forms from being, you know, modified from other users. <clears throat> so then we have the label that we created in our, inside of our div. And then our input for our text field is auto-generating a name, and it generates the name because we knew we had a blog post, and we said we want the title field. So let's go to this and look at that line. We say form, text field, title, and it says, okay, you want a text input, and we know you're having a blog post, and we want the title inside of that. And it also generates an ID if you need any JavaScript to reference this. And the same thing happens for the body, but instead of the text field, it's using a text area, so we can write more than one line. And the button is a submit button, and it even knew that you had a blog post, so it says create blog post because it knew it's a new blog post. It also used that human name for the blog post as well. So now we can create a blog post, hello world three, type something in, create blog post and nothing happened. Well, that is because we are not handling that request. So what happens is we got an error. We made a post request to slash blog post and it said, action not found, there's no create in your blog post controller and we haven't finished that yet. Um, so it just gave us an error and then the browser knew, oh, there's an error, let's refresh the page and uh, you can try again. So the next step is for us to write that create action to actually save the blog post inside of our controller.